Welcome to this lecture on histology. In this lecture I am going to cover the connective tissues. This is a microscope slide view. However, I will not cover much of the physiology. I will do that in a separate video. Please keep in mind that viewing these slides online does not take the place of actually going into the lab or obtaining access to a microscope to look at the tissues yourself. That is the best way to learn them. However, this is meant to be a supplement in the instruction in case you don't have access to either of those. The first slide is a view of adipose tissue. We can see the type of tissue listed here and the objective magnification. This is not the total magnification. If you want the total magnification, you take that number times 10. This slide is showing the adipose cells. We can see clearly that. And one thing to keep in mind is, is your slide may not look as good. That is, as they're fixing the slide, sometimes because these cells are so fragile, they will take and you will only see parts of the cell membranes in, in all the slides. So keep that in mind. You may actually be looking at adipose tissue even if it doesn't look as neat as this slide. Let's take a closer view. Here we have a closer view of the adipose cells themselves. Notice that you don't see any nuclei. This is a 40x objective. There is not any nuclei um, and you also don't see the adipose tissue itself. It is contained within there, we just can't see it. Here is a slide on blood. The majority of cells that you see in blood are the red blood cells. Those are all the round, red, discoid shaped cells. We also have white blood cells. As you can see here, they are generally larger and they will have dark stained nuclei. And the type that is not shown here is the platelets. You often see the platelets as small purple granules or purplish granules in among the RBCs or the red blood cells. Here is a, a slide showing compact bone. Each of these bullseye looking structures that we see in this slide is one osteon and this osteon has several structures within it. One of the main ones being a haversion canal that is the central canal that runs through the osteon that carries the blood vessel and the nerve. You also have these black spots that we see everywhere. These black spots are the lacunae that are housing osteocytes or the bone cells themselves. Here is a 40x magnification of that same slide. Here's our haversion canal. Here is our lacunae. These are the black spots. We also have these rings that go around in circles. That gives it that bullseye look. Those are called concentric lamellae. And then we also have these little lines that are going in this direction. Those are actual spaces that we call canaliculi. These concentric lamellae and canaliculi allow the cells to exchange materials through the fluid that passes in these spaces. Here is cartilage. This is called hyaline cartilage. This is a 10x objective. In hyaline cartilage, we have these clear spaces that we can see. These are the lacunae, or little lakes as they're termed. And if they're grouped together, they are called cell nests. Each of these lacunae hold one chondrocyte, which is the cartilage cell. The matrix is relatively dense cartilage and can be used for things such as on the ends of bones to help with friction. That is called articular cartilage. Next slide is a higher magnification 40x objective. Here's the matrix clearly seen in between the cell nests of lacunae that have the chondrocytes themselves. Pay attention to this matrix because the differentiation between the hyaline cartilage and the 
elastic and fibrocartilage is what is contained in this matrix in between these lacunae. Now here is elastic cartilage. This is from the epiglottis. This is a 10x objective. This is the lacunae housing the chondrocytes. This is the elastic cartilage from there to there. You can clearly see the lacunae, however you can't really see the elastic fibers yet. As you get a closer magnification those will become more apparent. Here's a 40x magnification of that same tissue. Here's your lacunae housing the chondrocytes and here is the elastic fibers that you can see running in between the lacunae themselves. That is what makes it elastic cartilage. Here is areolar or loose connective. This is a very wide open matrix as you can tell. There's a lot of space in there. This is a 4x magnification. This is generally easily distinguishable from the other connective tissues. It, it has its own very unique look. Let's take a closer look. And as you are looking at the tissue, you can see the fibroblasts. These are cells that are making the fibers. We have the more dull reddish color fibers. They are wider. Those are the collagen fibers. And then you have the thin, darker staining fibers. Those are the elastic fibers. Now there are also generally reticular fibers contained, though they're not easily apparent in, the, in these views. One closer look clearly shown the collagen fibers, the elastic fibers, and the fibroblasts. Here is reticular connective tissue. This is a 40x magnification. The reticular connective is defined by the reticular fibers that you can see within it. These are the reticular fibers here. Each of these black lines is a reticular fiber all through this slide. We can see red blood cells that are contained within. This is a slide section of a spleen. Here is a 100x magnification of the same. We can see the fibers running all the way through and the red blood cells themselves and a fibroblast that creates the fibers. Here's our slide of spongy bone. You can kind of see the lacunae. Those are the clear dots that you see within this tissue. Let's take a closer look. Now it becomes a little bit more easily distinguishable. This is all spongy bone from there to there. One more closer look and now you can clearly see the lacunae here that houses the osteocytes. This is, this is all spongy bone. We can also see right at the edge here and there osteoblasts. Keep in mind osteocytes help maintain the bone and osteoblasts help to build it. Here is a dense regular connective. This is white fibrous. This is from a tendon at a 10x objective. We can see the nuclei of the cells. Those are the purple dots. We can also see the fibers that are running in this direction, which is along the area of st stress, which would be running from left to right. Here it is again. One thing that I've seen with students is that they confuse this a lot with smooth muscle. Please don't make that, mis that mistake. These are not the fusiform shape. We will look at smooth muscle in another video. But we can see the fibers themselves. They are easily seen here. But these are all fibers and then we can see the nuclei of the cells and all these purple shapes. Here is white fibrocartilage. Now this slide was probably stained differently than yours. We can see each of these round clear areas is a lacunae and each of the dark stained areas is the fibers themselves. This slide is said to be differentially stained so that we can see the fibers easily. This is from an, an intervertebral disc at 10x magnification. 
closer look, this is a 40x of the same tissue. We can clearly see the lacunae that are that is housing the chondrocytes, and each of this of these red areas are the fibers themselves. You'll see a lot of fibers within the fibrocartilage. Notice that they are running in all different directions because they have to manage stress within all different directions that is placed within the intervertebral disc. Here is a yellow elastic ligament and this yellow elastic ligament is a type of dense regular connective. This is at 10x. Let's take a closer look. Here it is at 40x. Don't confuse this with smooth muscle as well. I have seen that with students because they generally mix the two up. We can see the dark purple areas being the fibroblasts. These are the cells that are creating the fibers. And one thing to note, you can see it has somewhat of a fuzzy appearance or almost squiggly lines going back and forth. That is resulting from the elastic tissue itself. That is one thing that will help you distinguish this from something like a dense regular connective such as a tendon.